Welcome to Dr. Ralph Sepsing International Ministries. This is Daily Devotional. I'm here today with the lovely and wonderful lady, Catherine Sepp. We come to bring you power. We come to bring you strength and the wonderful glory of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We have a very, very powerful program set up for you today. It is something that will enrich your spirit. It is something that will edify your soul. It is something that will basically uplift you. And it will also get you in tune with the power of the Holy Spirit. So, you know, we're going to wait till some people populate. And this is for those individuals who might decide to catch it later. We're going to go into the Word very shortly because we know that God is moving and he is worthy to be praised. It is a greatness and a wonderfulness serving our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. There's nothing that is greater than serving our Lord and Savior because he's lifted us up over a multitude of barriers, situations. He pulled us out of the miry clay and established us and put our feet on solid ground. I just want to take this opportunity to make certain to tell everyone to check out some of our other episodes on our YouTube channel. Uh, Lady Catherine said she has asked Lady Catherine where she asks, um, where she answers problems about love, about persecution, something to uplift and basically enrich your spirit, spiritual questions, and those situations that will help you to get in tune with the Word of God. We also have Doubled Edge Sword of the Spirit, which we'll also be doing some live for that one. That one is the raw, edgy, uncut Word of God, and it's packaged in a form that the average individual can understand it. And what it does, it revigorates your soul and radiates your spirit. And on, on Sundays, we have uh, Dr. Ralph Sr., International Ministries, Hour of Power. We're coming from the Red Stick, Baton Rouge, Louisiana, on this February the 19th, 2022. And the time is 1.44 a.m. We're doing a late night live. You know, whenever the Holy Spirit hits you, that's when you move with the power of God. So we're going to get ready to kick this thing off with a prayer and go directly into the message because God is worthy to be praised. He's a wonderful God, for he took care of you and I. He is the reason that I am here and you are here. And without God, there would be no you and I. So I'm going to start this off with a light prayer. And we're going to get ready to go directly into the word of God and enter into the body of Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ and Nazareth, forgive us for the sins we have committed. Forgive us for the bad things we've said and the bad things we've did. Forgive us for all those sins that we have committed against you. Because we are, are the ones that are at fault. We thank you for blessing us, lifting us up, watching over us, cleansing us, edifying our soul and spirit, putting a hedge of protection. You are our rock of security and you protect us from all the plans of the enemy. We ask that you bless this live stream of Daily Devotional, that this is your program, and we edify you. We pray in the name of the Son, the name of the Father, and the name of the Holy Spirit. So with that being said, we're going to get ready to go directly into this powerful message. So without any further ado, I give you the lovely, and wonderful lady, Catherine Sepp. There is power in prayer, and prayer is the key to open many doors. Yes, it was the power of prayer which freed the Israelites for countless years of bondage. You know, men and women of God, you know, prayer is the key to opening those doors and the Israelites, they found this out, you know, 
the Israelites are, you know, are hard-headed people because soon as God will free them from one situation, they will go back into the exact same situation. And, you know, they believed in worshiping other gods other than God, you know, the, the these Egyptian gods and the Philistine gods and even the Edomite gods, all these different uh, gods that were pagan gods. But yet and still, God still took them back. So that goes to show you how wonderful um, that God is. Lady Catherine said, you probably can read that portion again. Yes. Um, like I said, it was the power of prayer which freed the Israelites from countless years of bondage. A prayer is the equalizer which allows you to get the victory over every situation. And the thing about it, prayer is the equalizer because many times in the world we play on an uneven playing field. The enemy has all the power. The enemy, which is wicked, the enemy set in wicked and high places in this earth. And, you know, many times we are, as individuals who are persecuted, we may not have all those things that we should have. Or the enemy has suppressed us one way or another. But when you pray, you are strong as giants. You are elevated not only to the height and the depth of the enemy, but you will high, go higher and sky way above him because it is the power of the Holy Spirit that protects you and lifts you up. A great portion of Jesus Christ's ministry on earth consisted of prayer. As a matter of fact, Jesus Christ prayed in the Garden of Gethsemane right before his trials, sentencing him to be crucified. You know, Lady Catherine said, that's a good point you just made that. Because, you know, um, we do want y'all to understand and know that when Jesus walked the earth, he prayed by himself in the Garden of Gethsemane. He, pay, he prayed on a hill with multitude of people. He also prayed in the, uh, in the synagogue. And he prayed all these different places, men and women of God. He prayed with his disciples. He even prayed for the poor. So, you know, he shows you and uh, displayed to you the power that prayer has. And remember, he comes as the perfect example for us on earth. If you follow his example, you don't have no other choice but to have the victory. Yes, prayer is the secret weapon of every believer. Despite age, race, or social economical, prayer is the key and overall weapon, which is the basis for overall supernatural power when we engage the enemy in a spiritual warfare contest. Basically, it's the equalizer. It's one of those things you can topple the enemy if you have a strong prayer life. Prayer is like oxygen. It sustains you. Prayer is a living force and element of human consumption to edify your spirit. You cannot do without prayer. Without prayer, it's like letting your guards down and letting the enemy come in. And my Bible says, Lady Catherine said, when the enemy comes in, he comes in just like a flood. Yes, our prayer ascend earthly planes into second heaven to mesh with the power of the of the gods fighting angels. Wow. To war with demonic foes in the second heaven. That's right. Our prayers are heaven bound. Our prayers are not just earth bound. Our prayers are heaven bound. So when you get down on your knees and you start praying, when you get down on your knees and you start praying, I said, when you get down on your knees and start praying, those prayers ascend to heavenly realms. 
way above this earth. Now, I don't know how many of y'all know this, but there are three heavens, according to Apostle Paul. Apostle Paul said he knew a man who was caught up in the third heaven. He knew a man that was caught up in the third heaven. He was really talking about himself. So if you look at the mathematical um, explanation that if there's a third heaven, there must be a second heaven, and there must also be a first heaven. The first heaven is our atmosphere and the things that you can see with your naked eye. The, the second heaven, now that was the first heaven, the second heaven is a place where there's war and conflicts and constellations between angels and demons. That's where the spiritual conquest takes place for the souls of men on earth. The third heaven is God's throne room. That's where he lives in the third heaven. The power of prayer ascended to God's throne room in heaven when Moses called upon the mighty hand of God to split the Red Sea and crush the Egyptian army. See, the Egyptian army, they had the most skilled, tactical, they had the most legendary professional. Pharaoh at that time was a legend in his own lifetime. Many people don't notice that Pharaoh is considered a god. In all these other countries, people like Kim Jong-un, they consider him a god. Pharaoh was considered a god. He had to took over all these different countries, conquest after conquest after conquest after conquest. And he has the Israelites had been in bondage for all these years. The Israelites, which is the children of God, had been in bondage all these years. They were storm beaten. They were weak from their toil and their tussle at the hands of their taskmaster. They were all these things. They were beaten, old, and broken. So when they were released in the desert, they tried it. You know, many died on the way to the Red Sea because they had been through so much things. So you have the most skilled, tactical, creative army with an army general as skilled as Pharaoh that is anguished, that is mad, and he's coming like a raging bull. And you have these slaves who have been in slaves for slavery all these years, and they are backed up to the Red Sea. So they find themselves between a rock and a difficult place. They find themselves between a rock and a hard spot. They can't run through the sea. They can't run to the, uh, the other way because Pharaoh's army is ascending. Moses did what any spiritual general would have did. He called on the power of the Almighty. And when he did that, God released his mighty and powerful hand to split the Red Sea open. Also, prayers should be waged in several intervals to ask God to dispatch his mighty and powerful angel to protect us, according to Psalms 91. That's right. Prayers need to be put in certain areas. You need to have a prayer for your home life, work life, when you travel, you need to say a blanketed prayer for your family, for your health, because the enemy's job is to destroy you. And if you allow him to get a foothold on you, like the old ministers used to say a long time ago, one thing about the, uh, the devil, if you let him ride, soon enough he's going to be ready to drive. 
and he go take you somewhere farther and longer than you want to be. Then again, our prayers help to establish the hedge around every believer, which Satan complained about in Job 1.10, despite whatever situation you may be experiencing. Lady Catherine Sepp, I'm glad you mentioned that. Because Satan complained about the spiritual hedge. See, Job had everything. He was protected. He had a thousand sheep on a thousand hills. He was the richest man. He would be equivalent to what we would call a billionaire. He had women's servants and men servants and everything Job touched and put his hand to came out successful. So when God went up to Satan and he said, have you considered my servant, Job? He said, well, that wouldn't be no, no problem. The only problem is you got that hedge around him. You pull that hedge from around him, I will make him curse you to your face. And that's where the contest began. So the thing about it, you have to understand, Job was so dedicated and he loved God so much that God was willing to wager his main chess piece against Satan. And we knew, or better yet, know how that wind up coming out. Job lost everything in an instant. Family, everything in an instant. Even his own wife turned against him. Said, why don't you curse God and die? You know, even the people who were the closest to him attacked him. But through his dedication and faithfulness, not only did the Almighty bless him with new children, new servants, he blessed him with everything he had double fold. So that's the importance of prayer. So I want everybody to establish a prayer life. And, you know, I love the All Father prayer, but many times we have to pray a prayer that is intimate and tailored directly to God. Talk to him like I'm talking right now. He will hear you and he will answer you. So without further delay, I turn it over to Lady Catherine Sepp. She's going to give you the top four. And what that top four is, Lady Catherine Sepp? Um, that top four is reasons we need prayer. First, prayer is the activator or starting agent which promotes the powerful hand of God to move on our behalf. Lady Catherine said, that's a good one because when we think of activator, we think of lighter fluid. Lighter fluid, you know, you put the lighter fluid on the embers and you set fire to it. And before you know, you have a huge blaze. It's all about that activation. How do you activate God? How do you activate the power of the Holy Spirit? Well, the way that you can activate it is to know who he is, have a personable relationship with him, and he will open a door and a window. You won't have room enough to, and blessings that you show and not have room enough to receive. Secondly, prayers ascend the physical planes to spiritual realms to destroy the plans of wickedness in spiritual and physical high places. See, the enemy not only attacks you in this physical world, the enemy attacks you in the spiritual world also. That's why Apostle Paul said in Ephesians, the sixth chapter, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and wickedness in high places on this world. So men and women of God, he's acknowledging 
that it is a spiritual battle, not necessarily who you see. It is the spirit of man. It is this battle royale between the forces of good and the forces of evil. Thirdly, the exercising of prayer increases faith, power, and belief in the Almighty. You know, when you exercise prayer, it's just like lifting weights. One day you may come in and you might be kind of weak with your prayers. Next, next time you come around, you may be getting a little stronger. Before you know it, you're on full power and blast. You have the power of prayer and God is answering your prayers left and right. It's almost like what you're doing, your hands, they've been blessed to do it. And God stands up and he recognizes your love and dedication to him. And that's how things get moved in our favor. Finally, prayers allow us to deflect the plans of the wicked and topple all forms of evil designed to destroy our goings. That's right. That's what prayer does. Prayer breaks evil down like a compound. It breaks evil down. There's nothing that the enemy can do with prayer. Before you go to your destination, you need to say a prayer. When you're on your way back to your destination, you need to say a prayer. Prayer is one of those things that no, nobody physically can do it like you can do it. They can intercede for you, but it is one thing or it is something when you can get there and you can pray for yourself and God open doors that needs to be open. I tell you what Lady Captain said, but another thing I just wanted to add, but I just wanted to add, I want to tell everyone to definitely check out Lady Captain Sepp's newest book, Daily Devotional, presented by Lady Captain Sepp. It is something to edify your soul, edify your spirit. It's something to lift you up. Check out our YouTube channel, Dr. Ralph Sepp Senior International Ministry, where there is power, where there is strength, and where there is spiritual greatness. You know, we have a large library, extended, powerful episodes. We have Double Edge, Sword of the Spirit, Dr. Ralph Sepp Sr., International Ministries, and we have Daily Devotional. Let's not get forget Dr. Ralph Sepp Sr., International Ministries, Hour of Power. We're going to go ahead and end the live stream at this particular time for my lovely and wonderful co-host, Lady Catherine Sepp. I am Dr. Ralph Sepp Sr. This is Daily Devotional of Dr. Ralph Sepp Sr. International Ministries. Have a blessed and prosperous day.